Good morning, students. So today we are going to begin with a new class that is adverse drug reactions. So in this class, we shall be discussing what an adverse drug reaction is. We'll be classifying adverse drug reaction and also we'll be describing the different types of adverse drug reactions in detail. And in the question paper, usually you can be asked about the different types of ADRs and the questions I'll be giving at the end of this topic. First, let us define what an adverse drug reaction is. It is shortened as ADR. So it is defined as a response to any drug, which is noxious. Noxious means something which is unpleasant. Noxious, unintended, and which occurs at doses normally used in humans for treatment, prophylaxis, diagnosis of diseases, or for modification of physiological functions. So the, this, is a, this is a part of the definition of a drug that you have learned. So we're just telling that this ADR is a response to a drug which is noxious, unintended, and that is occurring at the normal doses, which are usually used for diagnosis, prophylaxis, and treatment of uh, various diseases. Now we have the classification of ADRs. So we have got two classification. The first one is the Rollin and Thompson classification, which is divided into type A augmented effects and type B bizarre effects. Now this Rollin and Thompson classification does not involve or include many of the many types of ADR. So we have a extended classification by Wills and Brown, where they have divided the ADRs into type A to type U. So we'll just see what they are. Type A is augmented effects. Type B is bizarre effects. Type C is chronic effects. Type D is delayed effects. Type E is end of treatment effects. Type F, failure of therapy. Type G, genetic. Type H, hypersensitivity. And type U is unclassified. So this is just for the classification. We are not going to deal with each type of these ADRs. We'll be only mainly concentrating on the type A and type B and a little bit on the type C and type D. The remaining is just for the classification sake. Now let us see the first type that is type A. It's otherwise called as the augmented effects or dose related effects. So augmented means something which is in increased proportion. So these are the type of ADRs which are commonly encountered and they are based on the mechanism of action of the drug. That means this ADR that is occurring is an extension of the mechanism of action of the drug. So what I mean here is that if a drug is able to block the H1 receptors, okay, so they can by that and H1 is present in various tissues and H1 means histamine receptors. So they can, if a drug is able to block the histamine receptors, it will be useful for conditions like allergy and all. But because of the blockade of the H1 receptors, the person can have sedation also. So the, the sedation which occurs as an unwanted adverse effect is actually an extension or the augmentation of the normal effect of the drug. So these are augmented but qualitatively normal response of the drug. So it is a normal response only, but it is an increased proportion. So we can predict this type of ADR if we know the pharmacological profile of the drug. So by any, if we look at any drug and we know the mechanism of action of the drug, so we can anticipate that the, the, the adverse effects that can be caused by this drug can be so and so based on the mechanism of action. For example, if a drug, it decreases a secretion. So we can anticipate or we can expect that this drug is bound to produce dryness of the mouth, dryness of the eye, because we know it decreases the secretion. Okay, like that. So we know the, uh, we can anticipate or expect the augmented effects. It is mostly preventable and reversible with dose reduction, and it is usually less severe. This type A is further divided into different types. It is called as the side effects, 
secondary effects and toxic effects. So we'll see each one of them. So again, type A, uh, when we are describing type A, we have described side effects, secondary effects and toxic effects individually. What is side effects? They are unwanted, but often unavoidable pharmacodynamic effects that occur at therapeutic doses. This is explained by one example, like atropine is used as a pre-anesthetic medication due to its anti-secretory action. So we are using it as a pre-anesthetic medication to decrease the secretion. So as I said, what will be the side effect? Dryness of mouth. This is occurring at the therapeutic doses only and it is an extension of the its normal pharmacological effect. On the other hand, what are secondary effects? Secondary effects are indirect consequences of the primary action of the drug. For example, suppression of the gut flora by tetracyclines. Tetracyclines are antibiotics. So they will suppress or suppress the growth of the gut bacteria. Now you all know that the gut bacteria is useful for the body. But when you're giving antibiotics tetracycline to treat some other infection, indirectly it will suppress the bacteria which are useful bacteria which are present in the gut also. And this can um, pave way for super infection by other organisms. So gut flora is actually protecting our body from various infection. Now when they are destroyed by tetracycline, indirectly it will give rise to other infections. Corticosteroids. So corticosteroids are used for various conditions. Now they can weaken the host defenses and this can lead to the activation of latent tuberculosis. So these are all indirect or secondary effects of the primary action of the drug. Then the toxic effects. It results because of excessive pharmacological action when the drug is used in over dosage. So in the case of side effect and secondary effect, we have mentioned that the drug is in the therapeutic dose itself. But here in the case of toxic dose effects, it is the, the extension of the pharmacological action is occurring because the dose of the drug is highly increased. It, in fact, this is in the overdosage. For example, uh, coma can occur if the in case of barbiturate poisoning. Similarly, respiratory depression can occur in morphine poisoning or morphine overdosage. So type A is adverse reactions are all because of the extension of pharmacological action of the drug. In side effects, the drug is in therapeutic dose itself, whereas in the toxic effect, the drug, the dose of the drug is more. And that is why there's an extension of the pharmacological effect. Now we go to the type B or the non-dose related or bizarre effects. B bizarre you already know from the English terminology. It means strange. Okay, this, um, so it is something which is very strange. It is not related to the drug. It is not related to the dose of the drug. Okay, neither is, is it related to the pharmacological, normal pharmacological action of the drug. So these are uncommon ADRs. They are unpredictable and they are based on the peculiarities of the patient and not on the drug's known action. So it is obviously not dose related and it is generally more serious and it will require the withdrawal of the drug. In the previous case, we can reverse the ADR by reducing the dose. In this case, you can observe that we require the withdrawal of the drug. This type B includes two types of ADRs. These are idiosyncrasy and drug allergy. So again, idiosyncrasy and drug allergy can be separately asked to you as short note. So we will see each one of them. So first we'll look at what is idiosyncrasy. It is a type B ADR, the genetically determined abnormal reactivity to a drug. This is the reaction which is seen in individuals of a particular genotype. Okay, it is not seen on all individuals. It is only seen in individuals who are having a particular genotype. Examples, barbiturates causing excitement and confusion in certain individuals. What does it mean? Barbiturates usually cause CNS depression, but in some individuals with a certain uh, genetic makeup, they produce the opposite, that is excitement and confusion. Similarly, quinine. 
It produces cramps, diarrhea, purpura, angioedema in certain individuals. Normally, it will not produce all these effects in uh, the, uh, the majority of the individuals. Chloramphenicol, it can produce aplastic anemia in certain individuals. So these are all examples of idiosyncrasy or genetically determined abnormal reactivity to a drug. Next one is the, the other type of uh, type B reaction that is drug allergy or drug hypersensitivity. Again, this is also asked as a short note, drug allergy, drug hypersensitivity. So again, when you are asked about this as a short note, the slides that I'm going to show you next, you will be writing the same slides one by one. So first you will introduce what is this drug allergy or drug hypersensitivity. So they are immunologically mediated reactions. They occur with very small doses of the drug and the manifestation. Obviously, I told you it is not related to the pharmacological action of the drug. It can affect the skin, airways, blood vessels, blood, uh, GIT. So it can affect all these areas. So we will describe the different types of drug hypersensitivity. We are having four types of drug hypersensitivity. That is one, two, three, and four. So we'll describe the first one, type one hypersensitivity or otherwise called as anaphylaxis. So this is an immediate type of reaction and it is mediated through IgE antibody. So how does it occur? So first one, during the first exposure of the drug, the antibodies IgE are produced in the person's body and they get fixed to the mast cells. When the person is re-exposed to the drug, the antigen antibody reaction, that is the drug and this IgE antibody reaction will occur on the mast cell surface and it will lead to release of mediators from the mast cell and these mediators are histamine, leukotrienes and prostaglandins and they lead to anaphylaxis. What are the clinical features? Urtic area, yes, you can see this, this is called as urtic area. It can lead to bronchoconstriction, angioedema. Angioedema is the swelling of the soft tissues like the lips and the eyelids and all. You can see even the tongue can be swollen. This is very risky uh, because it can um, cause um, bronchoconstriction and um, respiratory problems also. You can see this is the tongue is also very much uh, swollen. This is the extreme of angioedema. And finally, the person can lead, can end up in anaphylactic shock, that is a fallen BP. So this is the, the sequence, urticaria, bronchoconstriction, angioedema, anaphylactic shock. The drugs which can usually cause such reactions are penicillins, sulfonamide. So you have to remember at least two examples of the drugs which can cause type 1 hypersensitivity reactions. So penicillins and sulfonamides. The treatment, how do you treat this? We have to immediately stop this drug which has caused this anaphylactic reaction, put the patient in reclining position, give oxygen. The drug of choice for anaphylactic shock is adrenaline. Okay, we have to inject adrenaline 0.5 milligram IM and repeat it every 5 to 10 minutes. Other than adrenaline, we have to give antihistaminics like phenyramine and steroids like hydrocortisone. So adrenaline, phenyramine, hydrocortisone. This is the treatment for anaphylaxis. To prevent anaphylaxis, it is always better to do a skin test before administering the full dose of a drug. So if you have any drugs like penicillin or sulfonamides, it's always better to do a skin test with a small amount of drug before you administer the full uh, drug to the patient. Now we go on to the type 2 hypersensitivity reaction. These are called as cytolytic reactions. So during the first exposure, the drug and the component of a, of a specific tissue, they will act as an antigen. So here the drug alone is not acting as an antigen. Drug plus component of a specific tissue will form act as an antigen and it will result in the formation of antibodies. In this case, it is IgG and IgM. In the previous case, it was IgE. It is In this one, it is IgG and IgM antibodies are produced and this will get fixed to some cells. On the re-exposure to the drug, antigen antibody 
reaction will occur at the cell surface and it will lead to the cell lysis. So whichever cell this antibody was attached to, that there will be lysis of that particular cell. So it can lead to thrombocytopenia when the platelets are getting lysed, a granulocytosis if the blood vessels, uh, WBCs are getting lysed, a plastic anemia. Okay, liver kidney damage can occur if, if the, some liver cells are getting lysed. These are the, the this type of reaction usually lie, result to cytolysis. The causative drugs are, example, uh, quinine. Quinine can produce cytopenia. You can see cytopenia usually presents with this purpuric lesions. How do you treat this condition? You have to treat it with steroids. Then you have got the type C hypersensitivity reaction. It is called as the immune complex mediated or arthritis type of hypersensitivity reaction. Now this is uh, mediated by circulating antibodies like IgG. It usually develops about three to four days after the exposure. Then antigen antibody complexes, they will bind the complement and they will precipitate on vascular endothelium and the basement membrane of tissues. So it is also affecting mainly the blood vessels and some of the tissues. And this will, once um, this is the precipitation of the complement occurs on these tissues, there are some, the release of chemotactic mediators and some destroying enzymes and they all will result in a very destructive inflammatory response. It is a very, very serious type of ADRs, which can cause a lot of inflammation in the body. Under this, you have got serum sickness, which is caused by penicillins, and Steven Johnson syndrome, which is caused by sulfonamides, lamotrigine, carbamazepine. And the treatment is steroids. So for your curriculum, we are not emphasizing or we are not elaborating too much on this, um, the, these uh, types, that is the serum sickness and Steven Johnson syndrome. We are not going to detail of all this. You only have to learn what is type 3 hypersensitivity, what all comes under this and what is the drugs causing this type 3 hypersensitivity and what's the treatment for type 3 hypersensitivity reaction. Next one is type 4 or cell mediated or delayed hypersensitivity reactions. They are mediated through sensitized T lymphocytes which carry the receptors for antigens. So here the antigens are now getting bound to the T lymphocytes and whenever the antigen or the drug which is binding to the T lymphocytes, it will produce lymphokines which can lead to inflammatory response. Now, it is a delayed response and it takes more than 12 hours to develop. The example of type 4 hypersensitivity reactions are contact dermatitis caused by local anesthetics or creams or dyes and photoallergic reactions which can be caused by sulfonamides, sulfonylureas, chloroquine. So drug allergy or hypersensitivity reaction, you will learn as a short note where you have to describe each one, one, two, three, and four, and you have to describe what happens in each of it, what is the drug that causes this, and probably the treatment. Wherever I have mentioned the treatment, you have to mention the treatment of that particular hypersensitivity reaction. So, so far, the, what we, from what we have discussed, you can get a short note on um, type A, augmented ADRs, where you have to describe fully what it is, you have to tell about side effects, you have to tell about toxic effects, you have to tell about secondary effects. Then you can get a short note on idiosyncrasy, and then you can get a short note on drug hypersensitivity reactions. Now we'll mention about the other types of drug reactions. So we move on to type C. So it is a chronic adverse reaction. So it is not only dose related, it is also time related. It occurs uh, when the drug is used for a prolonged time. That means high, um, the drug, drug, the patient has received a good amount of the dose of the drug as for a long time. Then it is called a chron the adverse reaction occurring because of that is called as a chronic adverse drug effect. And example are, uh, if you use steroids for a long time, you can end up with Cushingoid features. So you can see here, these are the Cushingoid features, the moon facies, the purple stripe, the buffalo hump. All these are 
the features of Cushingoid um, facies. And this occurs when the steroids are used for a long time. Similarly, the, if the drug called chloroquine is used for a long time, it can lead to retinopathy. The chronic use of analgesics can lead to kidney damage. So how do you uh, treat the type C ADRs? It is only to, you have to reduce the dose or you have to withdraw the drug. This is the only treatment for type C ADRs. Now we come to the last bit, that is the type T or the uh, time-related or delayed adverse effects. So these are um, these occur remotely from the treatment period. Okay, so there is a difference between the C and the D. So C is occurring on prolonged usage, but D, it is occurring much, much later than the, than the drug is used. Like you can see it is remotely from the treatment period and it can occur in patients uh, or their children. That means like if the mother is taking a drug, okay, the, the idea may not come up in the mother. It may come up in the fetus or the, the child that is born to that mother. So that is that much remote ADRs. So under this, you can have carcinogenicity and mutagenicity. And the second one is teratogenicity. So we'll see what is carcinogenicity, the development of cancer um, that, that can occur after the Take or intake of a drug. For example, if a woman is taking still bestrol during pregnancy, it can lead to vaginal adenocarcinoma in that woman or even in the female fetus that is born. That, that is that much remote. If a person is taking hormone replacement therapy for more than five years, they might end up with a risk of breast cancer. Similarly, Prolonged use of OCP can later on lead to the risk of breast cancer. This is a, these are ADRs which occur much, much later. That is beyond five years or 10 years. And it can also occur in the case of children who are born to people who have taken such drugs. Next comes the teratogenicity. This is the last part that we are going to discuss under this class. And teratogenicity is very important. It will be asked in the question paper. And uh, it is also one of the concepts that you should be remembering and uh, knowing throughout your uh, pharmacology curriculum, not only as pharmacology curriculum, but throughout your practice as a dental physician, you should be knowing what teratogenicity is. So it is very important. So please listen to me very carefully. So teratogenicity means, it is derived from the term teratos, which means monster. It is referring to the capacity of a drug to cause fetal abnormalities when, the, when it is administered to the pregnant woman. So this is a historical aspect. So this is called a thalidomide tragedy. So once a long, very long back, uh, what happened was you know, there were pregnant women were administered a drug called thalidomide for um, overcoming the nausea and the vomiting, which is usually associated with pregnancy. So it was a common drug which was given for these women and people used to take it. But what happened during those times, it was observed that the children that were born to the mothers were having no limbs or they were having missing limbs. You can see the limbs are very shortened and some of the limbs are missing also. And these were referred to as a seal-like limbs. This is a seal. You can see how the limbs are and just look at the child. It's a comparable. The seal-like limbs were there. So uh, later on, it was realized that it was the effect of thalidomide. Okay, and then thalidomide was actually banned. Not, I mean, it was taken off for their use in pregnant women. So here from here began the concerns for teratogenicity. That is um, the, the drug that was that is taken by the mother can cause abnormalities in the fetus. So the drugs can affect the fetus at different stages of development. Suppose uh, you, the, the woman takes a drug during fertilization and in implantation that is occurring between the period of conception to 17 days the entire pregnancy can fail. That means it can result in abortion. If the person, uh, the female takes any drug or uh, not all drugs can be teratogenic, but if he, she takes a teratogenic drug during 18 to 55 days, this is a very crucial period because it's a time when organ development occurs in the, in the, in the fetus. So if, the, um, if a teratogenic drug is taken during this period, the child can end up with organ anomalies. Again, uh, if uh, there is, if the person takes a drug, 
a teratogenic drugs from 15 56 day onwards uh, the it can develop uh, affect the growth and development of the baby so depending on the uh, period when the drug has been taken different anomalies can occur in the child now, what is the mechanism of teratogenicity? So it is not really completely known how a drug can cause teratogenicity, but why this drugs cause teratogenicity can be attributed to the fact that placenta is not a complete barrier. So placenta does not allow stop all the drugs. It can allow some of the drugs to enter the fetal circulation. And drugs which are reaching the fetus may influence the process of differentiation of cells. It can interfere with the passage of oxygen and nutrients. It can cause deficiency of certain critical substance in the fetus. So these factors can lead to some anomalies in the child. Now, some of the examples of teratogenic drugs and the adverse effects that they can cause are thalidomide. I told you they can cause phocomelia. This is the absence or um, absence or missing limbs. Then diethyl stilbestrol, it can cause vaginal carcinoma. Warfarin, if it is taken by the mother, it can lead to hypoplasia of the nose, eye socket of the fetus. Phenytoin, it can lead to fetal hydantoin syndrome. Sodium valproate, it can lead to spina bifida in the baby. AC inhibitors, if it is taken, it can lead to oligohydraminos, renal anomalies in the baby. Similarly, the antithyroid drug and lithium can cause congenital goiter and um, even the lithium can cause Epstein's anomaly also in the fetus. So how can you avoid teratogenicity? So avoid drugs during pregnancy. As far as possible, not ask the lady to take any drugs. If the drug is has to be used, for some reason the drug has to be used, then use safe drugs. That is, the drugs which are not likely to cause the ADR. So there is a, a US FDA pregnancy category A to X. So they have given the categorization, like which all drugs are safer or relatively safer. So you have to choose a drug which is safer. So the category A to X means A is safer. And as you go down to X, it becomes unsafe. So definitely you don't, don't choose a drug from the X category because it will not be safe. Then use drugs at minimum effective dose and for a minimum effective duration. And counseling on not to conceive while on teratogenic drugs. So if a person is already taking some teratogenic drugs, advise her not to conceive when she's on the teratogenic drugs. So that, that finishes our class for today. So these are the important areas that you have to be concentrating upon. Define ADR, classify ADR, both the classifications that you can write. Then you have to describe augmented type A ADRs where you have to describe in detail about what type A is, describe about side effect, um, secondary effects, toxic effects with the corresponding example. Describe bizarre or type B ADRs where you have to describe both about idiosyncrasy as well as type uh, hypersensitivity reactions. You can separately get a short note on idiosyncrasy as well as drug hypersensitivity reactions where you have to tell in the same format that I have given you in the slides and then describe teratogenicity with examples. Again, you have to follow the slides for that teratogenicity. You have to describe the uh, definition, tell the definition, then give the historical aspect, then the reasons why it is occurring, the stages of development and the effect it can uh, affect that can occur if a drug is given in a particular stage, then you have to definitely quote the examples of teratogenicity and also end up the short note by telling how to avoid teratogenicity. So that's all for the class today. Thank you all.